there exists things you would cut mm -hmm. that are pre-cut. So, okay, I'm going to do a demo with an onion, oh, which, I happen I, to have, which I see. I happen to have in my and office here. I actually was wondering why there was an onion here in the office, <laughs> you know. Just take me a second. Okay. All right, you might remember plotting coordinates. Well, that definitely. X and Y. X and Y. Okay. Right. So Descartes sort of pioneered how you put numbers on a graph. That I think, therefore, I am, dude? That dude. Get out. That's why it's called Cartesian coordinates. Get out of you here. You did not know this? No, I did Yeah, he was a brilliant guy. Brilliant that, philosopher well, he's with, with a dose of math. With a dose of math? Yeah. I, yeah. Love, like, I guess that Rene Descartes. Yeah, a lot of philosophers were scientists back then. Yeah, they didn't have the word scientist. They, they were called it. natural philosophers. Natural philosophers. Right. You okay. were philosophized about the natural world. Right. And Newton was a natural philosopher. Today we would call him a physicist. Right. All right. If you have a dot somewhere on the chart, you can say how how far along is it on the x-axis? Right. How and then how far along is it on the, the y-axis? And that dot can be represented by two numbers. Great. Okay. Okay. Right. Anything on a flat surface, its position can be located by just two numbers. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, if you're down here, then you're in like negative space. Could be like negative five, negative six, right. whatever. Right. But or negative and plus, or plus and negative. So two dimensions can always be localized by two numbers. Okay. We would come to learn that Cartesian coordinates are not always the best way to think about a problem. Suppose your object that you're trying to describe is not rectangular, but suppose it's a circle. Right. Okay. So if it's a circle, let's draw a circle on this Cartesian right. x and y, y axis. axis. I can draw a circle and I, I can say, what are all the points on that circle? So I can pick a point, well, I have to measure it, I get two different numbers. I pick another point on the circle, I get two other numbers, mm -hmm. right? So I have a whole bunch of numbers. I can trace out that circle with all these numbers, or I can say it has radius r. Interesting. From the center. From the center. So if I that plot- That one r right. is every point every on that point circle. circle. Depending on the need, you will choose a coordinate system that makes the problem easier than it otherwise would be. Sounds smart. So. In calculus class. Okay, now you're... now I'm checking out. <laughs> I had to go with the calculus, thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, brother. Uh, so let me just get a can here. All right. This is a cylinder. A cylinder. Right. There's something called cylindrical coordinates. Okay. You know what that is? It's circular coordinates in two of the dimensions and rectangular coordinates in the third dimension. Right. If you combine a circle with rectangular coordinates, you extrude a, 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 a cylinder. A cylinder. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 It's very cool. Yeah. And so let's say we have a potato. All right. And you want to make French fries. Okay. I'm from scratch. I'm all about it. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. There you go. Yeah. All right. No. Let's start with potato chips. All right. Look, the potato is in three dimensions, mm -hmm. and potato chip is what? Two dimensions. Two dimensions. Because it's flat. It's flat. Yeah, it's, it's just flat. a little slice of potato. So, so you take a potato, just slice. Psst, psst, psst. Every slice yes. gets a... Right. You turn three dimensions into, into two, two dimensions. dimensions. Mm. You got that? I'm getting hungry. Okay. <laughs> and that's good. It was easy. Yeah. Okay. Now you want to make French fries. Right. So one cut is not enough. No. Because a French fry is only one dimension. Right. Length. Obviously, it has thickness, but that's, yeah, let's yeah, not yeah, worry yeah, about yeah. that. You, t you want something that only has length. Right. You cut off one chip. dimension that previously gave you your potato, potato chip. chips, but now you got to cut at right angles to that. Right. When you do that, now you get your a strips. Line. Of, you right. get your a line. You get a line. Okay. Right. All right. So now suppose I want, because I do this often at home, I want, um, I want to roast potato little cubes, potato cubes. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's like a, you yeah. mix it with some onions and some garlic. Absolutely. It turns out great. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, God, okay. Yes. How do I do that? Well, now I had a full three dimensional object. Now I just want particles out of that three dimensional object. It's so like one cut gets me the potato chip. Two cuts get me a line. Now I have to have cut in the third, third dimension, dimension. And now I got and my now little I got cubes. A cube. Right. There you go. That's cool. Okay. It took three cuts. However, Oh, God, no. Here there exists things you would cut. 
an onion is otherwise a three-dimensional object, except, except think of it not in circular coordinates where everybody's an R. Mm -hmm. Think of it in spherical coordinates. What matters is in those three-dimensional spherical coordinates, mm -hmm. the onion is layered in R. So we have an R that's this size, and it's an R that's a little bigger, and a, R another, that's a little uh, right, bigger, right. all the way out. It just keeps going out. It just keeps going out. Right. So if I want to cut an onion in all three of its dimensions, it's already cut in the R dimension. Right, because it's layers going into zero. That is a cut. That's effectively a cut. Interesting. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. All right, that's cool. So if I want to make little cubes of onions, I only have to cut it twice, mm -hmm. rather than three times that you had to do with the, the potato. potato. Okay? Right, right, right. Because it's not pre-cut. Because it's not pre-cut. There you go. And the layers serve as the pre-cut. As the pre-cut inside. They, okay, cool. That's why it's easier to cut an onion than a potato, yeah. for that reason. Well, and but potatoes don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one cut. Okay, that's one cut. Your cut, you made one potato chip. A second cut, okay? And this row of cuts, which for you would have made- French fries. French fries. Flat lines. For me- Oh, look at that. That single cut, that second cut gives you- For me- The three-dimensional make, cube. Makes the little cubes. Look at that. So here are your three-dimensional cubes. Correct. Look at that, from two cuts. Empowered, because it already came that way. Cut in advance. Nice. Right. And I think about that every time I cut onions. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I recently learned yes. that onions, in the gas that it releases when you cut it, there's a, right. a sulfur atom, and it goes mixes with your tears, with any moisture in your eye, and it creates sulfuric acid, which irritates your eye, makes you tear makes you even cry. more. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I just thought it was because I was killing an onion and I felt guilty. <laughs> <That's>, oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry, onion. <laughs> That's a little bit of Cartesian coordinates in the spherical plane. Nice. <laughs> and a little bit of cutting onions. Yep. This has been yet another Star Talk explainer. Chuck, thanks for being here. Always a pleasure. All right. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, keep looking up. Thank <laughs> you.